Star Wars Battlefront reminds me why I love Star Wars. Its skirmishes unfold across iconic planets, with gorgeous landscapes and sweeping vistas on a massive scale. Endor's trees dwarf us, Tatooine's desert stretches for miles, and when the battle music reaches its peak and I glide over Hoth's frozen trenches, I remember the first time I watched that scene unfold. But Star Wars Battlefront lacks the longevity that makes its source material great. It offers initial engagement, and for the first 10 hours, it swept me through its harrowing firefights at a rapid pace. But then the cracks began to show. In the end, Battlefront feels more like an homage to Star Wars than a substantial Star Wars game in itself. And yet, what a beautiful homage this is. Dynamic lighting, vivid textures, windswept forests. Developer DICE has crafted a nuanced, detailed world begging for a closer look, enveloping you at every turn. This is all stunning, of course, but it's Battlefront's sound design that truly reels you in, with ambient wildlife and booming explosions. It speaks volumes that I considered turning John Williams' timeless score off just to hear the detail in Battlefront's world. This game demonstrates a strong sense of place. Maps look fantastic, and as natural landscapes, they're appealing, but they often lack focused design. Hoff's barren fields impart a sense of distance, but few creative sightlines. There are exceptions in some of Battlefront's maps, however. For instance, Tatooine's blend of exterior and interior environments. They create engaging battles from one match to the next. And make no mistake, there is an abundance of game modes here. Star Wars Battlefront offers a total of nine, each distinct in its own way, for better or worse. There's a spectacular heroes versus villains, which plays out exactly how it sounds. As if a box of Star Wars action figures came to life and, unsure of what to do next, resorted to violence. Then there's Droid Run, a unique variation of zone control in which the zones shift locations throughout the match. And then there's Walker Assault. This is Battlefront at its best. Walker Assault offers the game's most immersing gameplay and, in contrast to much of the game's combat elsewhere, it lends the sense of a bigger objective. Imperials escort their AT-ATs towards the base at the end of a path, while Rebels attempt to do everything in their power to repel them. That dichotomy between objectives means a different experience for both sides, and with numerous offensive and defensive options, battles can unfold with surprising variety. But just as many of Battlefront's modes feel uninspired. Blast and Cargo are just slight variations on Team Deathmatch and Capture the Flag, and they don't feel much different than they would in any other shooter. Cargo does lead to fun situations, though. It encourages teamwork and tactics to bring the flag back to your base, while balancing the other team's reactions as well. So in the end, there are several different ways to experience the military side of this sci-fi universe, but few are novel past the first hour. Much of this traces back to one root cause. Battlefront's combat can be monotonous. There are cases when Luke Skywalker cuts through an ATST or an errant rocket collides with an unlucky TIE fighter. But these moments don't feel as novel after Battlefront's early hours. By and large, combat consists of medium-range gunfights where opponents hold the trigger for two seconds and hope they're the one left standing. I seldom felt as if I was impacting battles, or as if my skill was playing any wider purpose. Vehicle combat offers variety, but not a ton. Although X-Wings, Snow Speeders, TIE Interceptors, and the Millennium Falcon all feel great, with intuitive controls and fluid maneuvers, they don't always play a huge part in combat. Airborne vehicles fly too fast over maps that are often too small in comparison, so strafing runs are often futile. However, snow speeders are essential in Walker Assault, as their tow cables can bring down the four-legged behemoths if used right. ATSTs can also turn the tide at crucial capture points across larger maps. I wish more vehicles led to these kind of thrilling situations. DICE does implement a progression system in its multiplayer, with everything from character skins to blaster variations, ion grenades to homing missile launchers. Some grenades do more damage to vehicles, while certain sniper rifles fire more accurate shots. Aside from a few standout items though, such as the jump jet, which lets you leap across the map and into the fray, these unlocks don't always change how you play in the long run. Trait cards, which grant you perks like radar masking or explosive damage resistance, are definitely the most valuable options, and acquiring them really felt worthwhile. They're gems in an otherwise bland array of abilities. So if nothing else, Star Wars Battlefront is an exercise in pure spectacle, laid out in all of its neon glory. I still can't help but smile when Boba Fett's Slave 1 guns down three fighters in a row, or a snowspeeder careens past with flames trailing in its wake. The first ten hours are packed with these moments, and it's worth playing just to watch them unfold. But at the same time, Battlefront doesn't go much deeper than its ambitious surface appeal. It frontloads its best content, only to fade in quality as the hours roll by. Star Wars Battlefront's skin is beautiful, but its legs are shaking and threaten to buckle with time.